Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose one. Yeah! Hey, hey, folks, here we are. Nicely done. Happy Trail. Remember when you got your first Happy Trail? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it was kind of exciting. It would be like, boing, boing, yes. boing, 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 boing. I remember my first pubic peach fuzz. I fist pumped like I was fingering a guy's ass. Well, when you are la- when you have puberty a little bit late, there's always one guy. Even if it's three months, those three months are an eternity when well, you're just waiting oh, to get yeah. your pube. You see a guy lift his hand or arm you know, to Heil, and you see sure. that hair, you're like, oh my god! I know it was always the black kids had a they had a, you know a full beard, an afro pick in their pubes, and I was like, what the hell? I got nothing down here. But eventually, you catch up. Yeah, catch up and and mustard. mustard. I don't care for mustard, not oh, one bit. I love mustard. Oh, the browner the better. What? Much like an Indian. How I about love mustard? How about this? By the way, this is suspect. What do you do in this situation? Chime in uh, if you're at home. Call in. Hmm. Yesterday, I get home, times. long travel day, just a long uh, trip. Get home. There. One of these, like, west to east is a nightmare. Yes. You know, 7.40 a.m. flight. And then, my friend, these, these pimples. I hate these people that lie about how long it takes to get to the airport from their house. That's big. There's a lot of that. Oh, door to door, 18 minutes. Like, what? The GPS says 49. It's serving no purpose. No. What is this lie? They're like, there's no traffic at five. I'm like, I've taken this flight. There's yeah. a bunch of traffic. It's 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 the Pacific Northwest. There's always traffic. I'll tell you what it is. These queefs who live out in the burbs, they don't want to feel far away. So they lie and round down and, and down syndrome and the whole thing's a sham. But I'm like, we're close friends. You're just fucking me. So then, of course, I'm like, can we just leave at 5.15? I know it'll only take 30 minutes, Uh even though I know you're wrong. And you do like being early. I'm early. That's what I said. I put it on me. Because after a while, you're like, you're just lying. Yes. Put it right on my tits. You know, you put the load right on me. And so, I, Fanny. Ah, yeah. Take a load off. Fanny and Fanny. She does our ads. We love you, Fanny. So... We leave at 5.15, of course, dead stop traffic, takes 48 minutes to get there. There it is. As always. Uh, now, did, did you get a little, uh, oh boy, was I wrong, or man, you were right, or oh, thank God we left early, something? Well, I, I write, I love you, great mom, great friend, but please stop it with this 30 minutes. Uh huh. And she writes back, well, that's really sweet, but she's, and then she writes, I swear to God, there's never, ever traffic, and there I'm like- we go. I come here every six weeks. Yeah, yeah. This is my sixth trip here. There's and always traffic. You do that trip more than they do. Exactly. That's what people... I got on a big fight with a lady about some boyfriend-girlfriend stuff, and I'm like, I've dated more women than you. I've fucked more women than you. I know about this. And she's mm-hmm. like, but I'm a woman. I'm like, but you never dated one. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. We know more... Men are smarter, better, bigger dicks, bigger brains, and that's the truth. Definitely bigger dicks. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I've seen a couple. Okay, Elliot Page. Bailey J. Yeah, yeah. Uh, boy, she's hot. Yeah. Any, very, any. very attractive trans. I don't even know what the, the fuck story I'm telling. Transportation. Oh, so I'm traveling. Boy, that was a long way to go to get to where I'm going. Uh-huh. I get back yesterday. You know how you're just exhausted. 48 minutes. You wake up at 5 a.m., you get home at 5 p.m., 12 yeah. hours. Yeah, and you lose three. Exactly. Well, it's nine hours travel, but yeah, 12 with the loss. Sure. So I immediately order PD's burgers. Give me a double cheeseburger fry. I'm starving. Uber Eats. Uber Eats. There you go. There's no ketchup in our house, so I go to the oh. bodega next door. Run in there. Now, what do you make of this? I took a photo. Maybe we can plug it in oh, and post. Oh, plug in a photo. I love a photo plug. I look up. And the, a butt plug. I pick up the ketchup. There's the big ketchup. One is red, and the other one is dark red, almost brick. Interesting. Both Heinz ketchup. I'll, play, I'll show you the photo. Interesting. Heinz ketchup. So then. Are they labeled differently? Is this sriracha ketchup or nope. some shit? Whoa. Both Heinz. You can see the temperature difference there. Big tint. This, this is like uh, complexion, white and black. So believe it or not, this one's 
bigger. It looks smaller because of this. So I get this guy. I get the red guy because mm. I'm like, I'll just get the red, bright red, Seen and it's it a better size. Yeah, yeah. Pay for it. This is a bodega, mom and pop bodega. I run over back to the house. I go to open the, the can to pull the seal off. Sure. This thing is glued. The seal or the top? No, the top. I see. Then I just go, let me try to squirt. I squirt, ketchup shoots out. Yeah. Wait. So there's no seal. Mm-hmm. So they, they took a, this bodega, took a Heinz ketchup bottle, Uh huh. then put whatever, Steve's ketchup in there. Period blood. Then they glue on the cover. Whoa. You can't get the cover off. I was like, ah, like that. It won't come off, and there's no seal on it. So there, wow. that's illegal. That's totally, and they married it. You know, they marry the yes. juice or the drinks or the liquor. Wow. So that's a little sketchy, but so then I'm like, I shouldn't eat this. This is, you know. Uh, tainted. Tainted. Turned. Tainted ketchup. Spoiled. What's the name of that fat Hispanic guy who does the gotcha stuff where they go in and he goes, They'll send in like a, a lady with one arm and nobody will help her. And then he goes in. And he goes, "No one help this lady with one arm." You've seen that? No, I don't know. Oh, Rich, it's Richie like Valens? a gotcha show. It was. A, it was. There was like a Dateline thing. Like it was that. Dateline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I forgot do. the guy's name, but yeah. he looks like a, a big fat uh, Eric Estrada. But that would be perfect for this because you go in and you shame them. He, I caught you, fatty. Well, and it's against the law. You call the Better Business Bureau. But I was so hungry and my food was there that I was like, "Well, I'll just risk it." Yeah. So I had it, and so far, I mean, my dick's still there. So. All right. Well, there you go. That's one good thing about condiments. You can leave that shit in a fridge, freezer, back room, uh, basement, dry good, and it'll it'll hang. Oh, yeah. Especially ketchup. Yeah, ketchup, I think, is not good for you. No. They say it's the only thing that hits all flavors in your tongue. And it's the sweet, sour, salty... It hits them all, savory, whatever it is. No kidding. Yeah, that's why it's so good. Coca-Cola, I believe, as well. You can give that a goog if you want there, Chuckster. Well, those are two of my uh, real addictions. Ah. Yeah. You I mean, like the whole tongue. Coke, I gave up. It's been three years since I've had a Coca-Cola. Ah, Pretty proud of that. Wow. Man, yeah. you're like uh, Robin Williams. You gave up Coke. Hello! <laughs> Toodaloo! <laughs> it was a drive-by fruiting. Run by. Oh, boy. Well, I got to apologize. I missed the Seattle shows. Yeah, I feel bad. Yeah. I did a Q&A after, where's Joe? And that time, it, it met, made sense. People were up, uh, uh, hurt. Hurt? No They were hurt. hurt. No, no hurt. Hey, one guy said, I didn't. I don't even like you. I came for Joe. No, uh, what the hell? On. What the hell? You teased me. He let me down. He bailed. Well, there was two shows, so we could just lie and say I was at one of them. Ah, let's each do that. will assume the other one. I did one of them. We'll go with that. Yeah, I did one, and it was, boy, I really blew the roof off yeah, the place. You picked the wrong show, Dickless. Yeah, you really missed it. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what it is? You just you get the sweatpants on, which I still have on. By the way, I have a ketchup stain, ironically. Ah, is that the ketchup That's in the, the bottle? That's the ketchup, yeah. Wow. What, what's going on with ketchup now? I guess because it, it was exposed to the elements. Hmm? That's why it was a different color? I think it's just a different ketchup. I don't know. Oh Would yeah, the, wouldn't the the label be different? Exposed to yeah, it's not blood. I know, but I think <laughs> uh, when it uh, it's still food, it's still got you know you leave an avocado out, that's not blood either. It turns brown. Right. I think this changes over time. No, ketchup doesn't change. I think they're just filling it, and the bottles different because they they put in their own ketchup. I'm telling you, they're making fucking. Oh, so Harry's ketchup in the back. Right, yeah, right. that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Some ketchups were just darker than other ketchups. Sure. Yeah, I think Heinz. But it's not like light skin, black, dark skin. You know, it's it's usually all the same color, is it not? No, no. there's, no, oh, there's okay. darker ones. All yeah. right. There's like a there's like a ketchup that's pretty. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, there's, a, there's a pretty mainstream ketchup that's like very brown. I forget what it's called. It's like. Professor something, right. but it's a pretty. You know what I mean? I hate those highfalutin ketchup. Oh. Like, this is Lord Kensington's uh, yeah. miscarriage. Oh, it's the worst. Same All with right. sodas. Sodas and ketchups. I don't want yours. I want mine. Yeah, this is boil soda. It's made in Virginia by some fat lady with one arm. All right. So we missed you in Seattle, <sighs> but it was a hell of a show. And they did ask. You know, people did ask about you. Oh, well, but, that's sweet. Yeah, they like you. 
Well, you know what it is. It's like uh, you go to the kids' soccer game. That's at 2 p.m. It ends at 3.30. You got to go get lunch afterwards. Then it's a beautiful day out beautiful there. Beautiful day in the Pacific Norway. It was something else. So you sit in the back. Yep. And I was truly undecided. I was like, I think I'm going to go there. You know, I reached out. I said, I'm going to go to this show. I just came off a hot L.A. trip. I feel hot and heavy. I want to hear about this L.A. Oh, it was something. But, I you know, you, you sit back there. You go, let me have a cigar. Yeah. Yeah. And then Derek goes, why don't, why don't you start the fire? And I go, uh, good idea. Yeah. I'll get the fire started. You kick that up. You put the little tent in the teepee. Uh-huh. And then you're sitting there, and I know you have this. Maybe you have this. Maybe not you as much, but I got a cigar. I got a campfire. I'm in sweatpants. I haven't showered in six weeks. The shower is a real deterrent. That's the thing. It's that moment, and this is why it's tough to live in the suburbs, why people move to the suburbs and turn into mushy, fat Shitty comics. Yes, yes. No offense to anyone in particular. You know who you are. <laughs> we all know. But you're sitting there, and now it's four thirty, five, and you think I'm in Gig Harbor. The the sky and the kids are playing. I got a music. I'm playing music. The kids oh, are dancing. DJ. How, how far out are we talking? And don't give me some bullshit thirty minute airport line. No, well, that's the thing too. There's always traffic. It's probably about. I'm going to say 48, 50 minutes oh, to that's a, Neptune that's a, Theater. That's a chunk. And then you got to park. You got to park. And I also have to figure out from you or whoever, hey, what's the stage door? Yeah. So I'm not yeah, going to yeah. stand in line. You have, no, you have that no, image no, no, no. of like, oh, uh, hey, I'm trying to do a spot. Well, uh, you're not on the list. And I had an all access beauty just waiting for you. Woo! But it's the park, and then it's Seattle, so there's like homeless encampments. You're gonna see them and get bummed about that, and find the park, find the parking. Yeah. But the mo the the number one thing is that click. You have to switch to like okay, yes, yes, kids, enough out of you. I have to walk to the shower. Shop, put on jeans, yeah. put on fresh clothes. There's a lot of steps. People yeah. think, oh, you just get in the car and go. No, there's steps, Jerry. You got to get up. You got to get in the shower. You got to take your clothes off, dry off, put clothes back on, get in the car, get the GPS going, drive the 48 minutes, find parking, text me. It's a lot of things. And switch from as as comfortable as yeah, I get, yeah, as the yeah, most yeah. comfortable, No, jo- everyone loves me, yeah. into... Uh, hi, hi, I'm Joe. I'm a comedian. Oh, you're a comic. Yeah, I am. Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, hi. There's, you got to tap to nine it. people before I get, I get to you. Sure. And then, you know, you got to come out, and then it's like, yeah, you got to switch into comedy mode and zing right. and zoop in. Nope. And then there's the thing of like, now what am I doing? Am I just hanging out in the back for an hour? Right, right. So you right. come off, and then you got to go do meet and greet. So am I just waiting like a girlfriend? I think you would be. Yeah. It's a lot of like, and then you come back, and now it's late, so I'm like, well, I don't really want to. I got to go. Yeah, I get I'll it. I'll see you later. It was I a lot it. of things. Well, you sent me a text at about 2 p.m. About 2. What's the deal? I said, the show's at 7 and 9.30. Come on by. You're on the list. And you sent me a kid's soccer game photo. Yeah. I jerked off. And then I go, he's not coming. Once I saw that soccer I game, know. I was like, he ain't coming. He is in La La Land out there in the burbs, baby. Well, the kids, they pull you in because yes. they're listen. They're really like, uh-huh, and what else? And you're like, and then this. And then unlike every adult who's like this, no, nah, wrong, stupid, bullshit. You don't know what you're talking The kid is like, really? Oh, my God. And you're right. like, I- I'm-, I'm the king over there. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I had a pool going with the openers. And uh, we, they, uh, they were like, no, he's coming, he's coming. I said, nah, 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 he's coming. Yeah, it's tough. It's that switch. If they still lived in West Seattle and it was an Uber ride. Mm, that the, helps. The pickup, drop off, maybe. Now, let me throw this nugget at you. Let's <sighs> say, and I don't think, I don't know if it's a good idea, but it is a good idea. If teleportation existed, it would change the whole world, obviously. You could just, boop, I'm in Israel. Boop, I'm in Wuhan. Boop, I'm in uh, Flint, Michigan. All the best places. I don't know if it'd be a good thing. Because you need that. You need that uh, drive and that push to get somewhere. It should be a thing to get somewhere. Yeah, well... Hmm. But it's a give and take. It's it's like fire. It can burn your house down, but it can cook your burger. Or the internet. So or many the good internet. Things, so many bad. It's going to ruin our whole society. But you know, well, we can get good. Happens. Yeah, we can get on porn easily and GPS and uh, Uber Eats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't know. Teleport. 
It's in dangerous. That, in that case, though, I'd still have to shower and stuff. It's still ah, the mental switch. It's not just the travel. Because once you're in the car, that's fun. It's the click from shower, I'm, a, I'm an adult talking to comics. Right. Oh, oh, oh. So that, yeah, either I way. Unless I could have just been like, Psh. I'm not big enough to d- show up like this. Ah, they wouldn't care. Yeah, I guess not. But. I'd think they'd be like, whoa, he's here in his pajamas. He fucking made it. This guy's uh he's a schlub. You want that Sandler status. Oh, Sandler does the Tonight Show like this. Oh, man, he looks like hell, doesn't he? Yeah. He put on a few LBs. He's got basketball shorts, an orange polo, uh, weird sneakers. I mean, he looks like a hobo. Yeah. So maybe I'll, I got a couple movies that make $50, 60000000 million. Yeah. You know, my lady's like obsessed with Sandler. She thinks he's like the hottest guy. And when you're that rich, yeah, you're well. marrying this woman? I know. Well, she likes me, too, so there's something off. But Sandler. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, Billy Madison days. He was cute. He was like in shape and handsome so, and funny, yeah. obviously likable. Cute. How do we do? You know, all that shit they like. <laughs> I think Sandler started the cool, attractive guy on SNL doing a silly totally thing. Totally started that. I think it went Sandler and there was Sandberg, Pete Davidson. Fallon. Yeah, it's all the, the same, right. same role, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sandberg was another one. Yeah. But. The fact that he's a zillionaire and a legend and a household name and all that, and he dresses like that, that's what's interesting about the ladies. They, they factor in all the extra shit. Right. If, if uh, well, Stavros is a bad example, too, because he looks like ass as well. But if, if a comic showed up looking like Sandler, they'd be like, this guy, like Donnelly. If Donnelly showed up with Sandler's yeah. outfit on, they'd be like, yikes. But if you're that guy and you show up like that, you're hot. Well, I got to say, we just had a uh, fire drill here. And I got, oh, I'm yeah. wearing this, I got ketchup. You got ketchup on it. And I went out there, <laughs> and the fire marshal was talking. He's like, you must find the most Im- immediate, like he did a yeah. pause, double take, face squinch. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. It was not good. It was a bit of a scold. It was like the principal was there, and you, uh, you know, you were in a dress. I showed up my LDPs, mm-hmm. liquid death pants. By the way, liquid death, send us some more pants. I got, I got pants. I got LDPs on every every show. Send us the pants and the yeah. fucking water. Whatever you got. Well, I want a can. Water. Cans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. When that weird guy doing the fire drill announcement thing at the end, he goes, "Does anyone have any questions?" I pointed to you, like like you might have a question. Like this guy, this guy, he looked Uh-oh. at you for a second. Uh, uh, he did the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had nothing. By the way, our neighbor. Did you see him? He didn't he never, show up. Never came out. This guy, he's bold. He does I've what never he seen wants. his face. Do you guys know what he looks like? He does what no, he, no I, I started to, to Google it. him. I know his name. Uh, Ooh. I'm Google him. I'm not going to reveal it, but yeah. yeah, he does. He he beats to his own baby. Or whatever he goes rogue. Is. Yeah, he he beats his wife. I mean, clearly, he's terrifying. Yeah, but I don't want to see his face because I picture him as this devilish ghoul with like fire coming out of a suit. No, I'm still picturing Chris Cuomo. Interesting, but, but with the fire. All right, I'll take it. Fiery Cuomo. Fire alarm chili. Hey, hey, folks. Two Scissor Stories is brought to you by BetterHelp. Oh, yeah. If life came with a user manual, things would be easier for everyone, but it doesn't. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating a career change, a new relationship, and becoming a parent can make you feel uncertain. You got that right. Therapists are trained to help you learn productive coping skills which makes therapy the closest thing you'll get to a user manual you got to do therapy we're all in it using the same guy which is very weird but you know it's like using the same prostitute he knows all the spots and uh you know you can complain about your friends while you're there so get on it the bags are piling up help yourself it's an online therapy that offers video phone and chat sessions as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can always switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. That's Better, H E L P dot com slash Tuesdays. Get on it. Hey, hey folks, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Sheath. You know Sheath, the official underwear of comedy. I'm wearing them, he's wearing them, you're wearing them. 
Everybody's wearing them. The funniest balls on the planet are being cradled by sheath. The best undies out there. We love them. I'm wearing them right now. I swear to God. I wore them when I got married. I wore them when I lost uh, my labia and Kaiman. You got to love them. The U.S. Army soldier and Tuesday, Robert Patton, knew there was had to be a quicker way to get his dick from sticking to his leg. It comes in many patterns, and you can have a pair ready for any occasion. I just throw about 13 in my suitcase, and I wear them all year round. I barely wash them. I turn them inside out, but they're the best. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESDAYS to get 20% off your first order and sheath's 100% money-back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com. Promo code TUESDAYS. Get sheath underwear and let them support your cojones. But I did the cross-country flight to the Pacific Northwest, landed in Seattle. My phone dies immediately when I get on the plane. Oh. Isn't that the worst? It's a six-hour flight, and I go, well, we got the cord or the outlet right here. No outlet working, and you go to the guy, like, hey, the outlet's not working. He's like, yeah, sorry. And I had the whole plan. I'm like, oh, I'll charge it when I get on the plane. Right. Zilch. And I'll tell you, when your phone goes out for six hours, the addiction hits you. You're like, oh, yeah. wow, I am a mess without this thing. I did the crossword puzzle in the va- in the magazine. I'm like an old lady. I'm reading fucking, uh, be- what's that shit with the... the- the, the the inventions and the Sky Ball? Sky Ball. I've been Sky Ball. Been gone since the eighties. I've got Sky Ball going. I'm doing highlights. I'm circling the, the paper clip and the tree. <laughs> I did the crossword. I did the jumble. It was insane. I read the whole I read an interview with Billy Eichner. I'm learning about Budapest. I wanted to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, no, it's rough. It's rough. I mean, I get the Wi-Fi now. I'll tell you what, they could charge $755 for the Wi-Fi. You got to do it. Whatever, you got me. I'm looking at everybody else's phone. They're all lit up, having fun, iPads with TV shows. I wanted to kill myself, Jerry, and I was like, maybe I'll write. I wrote. I wrote on the plane. Oh, wow. I love writing on the plane. It wasn't pretty. I got nothing out of it. Writing on the plane is good. But man, that clock, and there was no TVs. So I was just staring at the back of that United seat with a a fork about to go right into the jugular. Is there anything more like self Consciousing than writing on a plane because there's people next to you. You're so scared they're gonna see premise. Yeah, my asshole falls out right. on Wednesday and uh, swastikas. It's a horrible thing. By the way, I had a middle seat all the way back yesterday. What? Yes. Who are you? I know. Well, I I forgot to pick my seat and I was That's comfort what plus. I did that once. And then I called like the night before. It was like I was like crying talking to the guy. I'm like, there's a first class seat on the 11:55. How much is it to upgrade? And he's like, it's eight hundred and fifty bucks. And I thought about it for a second. Yeah, it's a and little even high. the guy was like, you can't do it, man. Yeah, come I on. I was like, really? And he's like, nah. Like, it's so funny when someone that has no concept of what you're like. For all he knows, I, I got I'm worth three million dollars. Right, right. And he's like, you can't do it. And I was like, really? And he's like, nah. Were you Comfort Plus? I was Comfort Plus middle seat yep, on yep. the 740 flight. The 1155 had one first class seat, Delta One. Oh. But that was 830 bucks. And I was like, what about miles? And he's like, there's no option for miles. Ah. And I was like, fuck. Yeah, it, it humbles you. It makes a man out. It builds character, that middle seat. It, I did it last week, and you want to kill yourself. And you go up to the desk, and you feel like a Karen. You're like, Anyway, you could uh, help me out here. You know, is there another seat? And he's like, uh, best I can give you is back row, no recline on the bathroom, middle seat. And you're like, thanks, Dick. You're right. But. Yeah, it was tough, but, uh, you know, you get through it. The worst part for me is the bath. I, I have to have my tea in the morning, which makes me have to piss. I, if I have an aisle seat, I'll get up and piss seven times. What? I like getting up, stretching, moving wow. around, jerking off. Uh, but... I, uh, what can you do? So I gotta just, I gotta just, uh, g- not funny. Just go out and give a big hug to the Moore Theater. Oh, holy Moore. shit, Dick Queef Nazi anal. Pearl that Jim place is beautiful, legendary. So I land in Seattle. You gotta get the rental car. There's just so many steps, you know. And I get to the get to the Moore Hotel, which is next to the Moore Theater, which is a shit box. Well, the theaters. Got some stank on. Oh, it's grimy. Yes. It's Frank Grimes, and it was ugly. The neighborhood's ugly. Mm-hmm. It's a bad day. It's drizzly, and you pull up to that Moore Hotel. Now, this is where this is where the travel kick, kicks you in the balls. Fly with no phone. You finally land. I made it. Ah. 
Then you get the rental car. That's a whole line with the rat maze. You finally get the rental car. Then you drive in rush hour to the Moore Hotel. You park the car. You check in. They give you a key, like a metal key. It's oh, one boy. of those places. Somebody's died in there. Heroin overdose. Janis Joplin got AIDS. Whatever it is. Then they go, where'd you park? And I go, I'm right out here. They go, oh, that's uh, you can't park there. And I go, where's your lot? And they go, we don't have a lot. So you got to go park the car in a parking lot down the down the way, and then we'll validate it tomorrow. And oh. I was like, oh, well, where's the lot? And then you got to go and the whole thing, and then you finally get upstairs, and you're like, all right, the show's in an hour. So now I got to shower, shit, shave, jerk off. And then I was annoyed. You get to that more. It looks like hell on the outside. It's like a haunted house. Yes. Hobos everywhere. Graffiti, broken bottles. You get backstage and they go, You want to see the, the stage? And I'm like, Yeah, sure, whatever. They pull that curtain back. It's three tears. Three tears, folks. Tears for fears. I mean, it's insane. It's beautiful. It's old. It's ornate. And outside, it's like you said, looks like my dad's asshole. Then you get inside, it looks like my mom's clit. Oh, your mom's clit is nice. Very nice, big clit. Can't wait till next week. Oh, yeah, meet her. So, Gary uh, meet her. So, uh, yeah, just a beautiful place. Taylor Clark opened. Hey, TC. We just had a ball. It was just one of those. Ah. Then you have that great night. Everything goes well. We got drunk in the green room. I leave. There's a dad and his son sitting in a Prius. They wait for me. They get out and they go, this is my son. He's a huge comedy fan. I took him here for his birthday. Thank you for a great show, whatever. And then the son's like, yeah, that was awesome. By the way, uh. You did that one joke about the Holocaust. A bunch of people left in the balcony. I'm like, ah, jeez, don't tell me that shit. They love telling you. I know. And they think you like it. They're not telling you to bum you out. They like telling you because they're like, hey, I know how you love to walk people. And I you're know. like, I don't want to bum everyone out. I know how you like hurting people's feelings and making them upset. Yeah, thanks. But sweet kid, good times. Then you, you fall asleep, you wake up, you drive to Portland, did two shows there. Blah, 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 with Ari Manis. Did two shows at the Re- Revolution Hall, which is an old schoolhouse. Oh. Love, still got the lockers up and everything. Oh, that sounds great. It's super cool. And you just picture all the kids in that school, you know, back in the day. It ended in 1980. It looks like a school out of, like, a uh, breakfast club. Oh, wow. Really cool. They made it into an art space, blah, blah, blah. It's all these offices. But we did the show. We leave, and we go, you know what? It's Port. Let's go to a strip club. Oh, sure. Let's go to a titty bar. So Ari's like, hell yeah. And we're like, well, where, what's the best one? There's, there's more strip clubs in Portland than any city in America. Right. So we're like, well, how do we know which one to go to? We don't want to go to the vegan one or the armpit hair one. No. So we, we did. I did a whole thing at the end of the show. I was like, give me some strip club. What's the best one? And unanimously, they picked one. So I said, all right, I'm going there. Then. Can you say which one? Uh, I can't remember the name. Fuck. You know, they all, it's like, uh, what is it, Thigh Highs or, or Purple Rhino. It's always Cunts. the same name. Yeah, Clits, uh, you know, Lady Parts. I can't remember. We'll figure it out. We'll put it in post. There you go. But Centerfolds. That sounds like one. Maybe that's it. Boot liquor. I don't know. But we get there. So first of all, we're like, well, I guess we'll get an Uber. And we're walking out of the theater, and there's most people have left. And this guy's walking to his car, and he goes, good show. I'm a Tuesday. And I go, hey, hey, you want to drive us to a strip club? And he's like, sure. So we get in this guy's Beamer, and the Ari, the opener, goes, oh, I got to drop a bunch of shit off at the show. He filmed everything. He's got Mm -hmm. camera gear. Or at the hotel. And he's like, I'll drive. He drove us to the hotel. Ari ran upstairs, put the shit in. I hung out with him. He's a football coach at the high school. Oh, wow. We get the shorts? No, he got out of uniform, but he had the whistle. I love those shorts. Great whistle. And uh, yeah, the short, is that bike? I think they're bike. I don't know. They're just coach shorts. They got those tight booty shorts and like a pullover. Yeah, and they shove that polo in there, and then they got the elastic cooking. Sure, the whistle, and then they have the uh, the white socks with the little like spot built sneakers. Uh Aha. Remember those? Spot built. That was an old brand. Pull up spot oh, built. Oh, that's a brand. That's my uncle always wore spot back in the built. 80s. I don't yeah, know spot yeah. built. Pretty sure. B I L T. Right. The house that spot built. And it had a big spot on it. They were like white with a big flap and had like a. Oh, on the bottom. You I got them? Oh, yeah. These are, these are, you'd recognize them. I don't know. The spot I remember built. wanting them when I was a kid. And then uh, they were like, they don't make them in kids' side. And I was like, yeah. well, I grow up, I'm going to have nothing but spot built. Okay. Very retro. Yeah. Can you spin it Can around, you spin show Marcus? Spin. Yeah, spin. 
or just a quick. Should I pull up? Give me a glance. Like, uh, I want to see a spot. You see, like, the little oh, the Sakani. Oh, yeah. the Sakani. Oh, are they? That's Sakani. Sakani. Oh, maybe Spot uh, Built is the model of shoe. And it's maybe Sakani. it's Spot it's Built same, became Sakani. Same wiggle on the side there. Similar. Hold yeah, on. these are different though. Okay, I think. well, somebody's stealing from somebody because that is I the do same think, pattern. I do think it's a different company, mm. but yeah, it's similar. Spot built sneakers. You know a coach was going to be scared if he had Wilson shoes. Nothing scarier than a guy wearing Wilsons because <laughs> that guy will kick you in the teeth. <laughs> here they are. These are more them. Let me see what we got. Yeah, that looks. Oh, like here they are. This is the one I was thinking Whoa, with the tongue, with the tongue. And, then, and then the thing. That's yeah. the one I described. Yeah, are that's we, a are floppy we getting this? tongue. Are we getting a shot of that? Yeah, we're getting a great shot. All the right, spots and the dots. Yeah, what is it? You know what? It's another weird shoe. Is Lotto. I don't know Lotto. Lotto. I've played the Lotto Lotto. up in Massachusetts. Lotto Lotto tickets. They were soccer shoes. Lotto. They look like Adidas. I don't know Lotto. I don't remember those. Is anything coming up, or did I make that up out of jizz air? Fat air. (laughs) All right. Lotto shoes. All right, so anyway, so he's a coach. He's, he's in a, a coach, BMW, and I go, give it to me straight. What What are the kids like today? He's like, oh my god, I've been coaching eighteen years. They keep getting queefier and queefier. Oh, he's like, you have no idea, blah blah blah. So that was fun. He's, uh, we talked about that, and uh, he drove us to the strip club, dropped us off. We walked in, smoking hot ladies. By the way, we went to the right one. Oh god. Ten dollar cover, not bad. Wow! And a lady—that's the Lotto. You ever seen oh, those? Oh, I remember Lotto. Yes, yeah, I've seen yes. Those. All right, Chuck sure. D. Yeah. Right when we walk in, this tall cup of jizz beelines right to Ari. She's three feet taller than him. She's got the boots on like this. She walks up and she goes, "How are you doing?" Goes in the back with her immediately, wow. drops a couple hundo, I lost hate, his whole paycheck. I hate tall. It's too much leg. I don't like a tall bitch. He <laughs> likes a tree. He it's wants a, a <laughs> he wants a big old 911 Tower One. Wow. I want Tower Seven, short and stocky, and goes down <laughs> easy. Was that a, was that, was that one shorter? <laughs> um, oh, it's quite a bit shorter. Is Are that you right? Kidding? It's uh, seventy stories shorter. Those are the what? tallest buildings in the world. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, of course. Tower 7. I'm thinking, you're thinking of the Pentagon. That's short. No, the Pentagon's short. Tower 7's 50 stories or something like that. And Which, what's the Tower 8? Or is it 6? There's 1 and 2 or 110 towers. That's tower what I'm thinking. Seven, yeah. Wait. Tower, those <laughs> Tower 1, Tower 2. Tower 7 is the one that they were like, that was the government, whatever the fuck. Is that, that's not a twin. It's not a twin. No twin. Oh, I'm talking about twins. It's here. a solo. Well, that's oh, just one and two. Tower. 7 is higher than 2. So it's Tower Seven. It's not Tower One or Tower Two. It's Tower Seven, right? But what? But he's yeah. saying Seven is short. Yes. Yeah. But they they're not going in an order of height. Oh. The, t- the twin towers are Tower One and Tower Two. Is what yeah. I'm saying. Yes. So yes. Tower Seven is not. Tower one Seven's one. a different. Yeah. It's part of the same was yeah. that conglomerate. Hit? It wasn't hit. This is the big oh, conspiracy that's theory. I, I thought we were talking about hit but buildings. What happened was I'm not it's just so we don't get it. I'm gonna hear from 50 people being like that was the FBI, the CIA, the Jew, whatever. No Jews in the building. Tower seven is when the tower two or one fell. All the debris fell on tower seven, so then it burned oh. out of control. It burned out of control for like hours and hours and hours and hours. Whoa! With why would it doing keep anything. burning? Hmm? And then eventually it crumbled, and so you know this. I'm sure somebody listening to our podcast yeah. right now is like, let's just a piece of shit. Right. He believes anything. Call in if you read QAnon or 4chan. Yeah. Let us know what happened to the tower. Yeah, let oh, me know and go ahead and block yourself. There you go. Speaking of which, I did want to say in this episode, we got the Tuesdays with stories at gmail.com email address back. You got that oh, right. So, so there, there, was, there was kind of no way to write into the show before because our old email address is like so long and annoying. It's like, it was like stand up New York Labs Tuesdays at gmail. But we have Tuesdays with stories at gmail.com back again. There you All go. Right, you guys you used go. to push it early in the show, and now we have it. So if anyone needs to write in for any reason, yes, call in. Tuesdays with stories at gmail.com. Send I think what message. happened was I had access to it, and then somebody would inevitably write, like, this sucks, fire him, blow me, you yeah. fucking piece of shit. Yeah. Tower seven inside job. Yeah. But anyways, okay, so you get in there, tall tower. Tall tower. She goes off with Ari. Apparently, he likes a big old palm tree, and he went back with her. She looked like Sideshow Bob. She had the wacky hair like that, and uh, he's a little Jew. He's like 5'1". Okay. And uh, he had a a ball climbing that mountain. (laughs) 
So uh, that was fun. And then I had the thing, you know, I had the, the the pretty lady come up to me. She's like, "Hi, I'm Maya. What are you What are you in here for?" What? And they're like, "Ah," and you're like, "I know you just want money. I'm just standing here looking at the broads. Uh, I, I don't know. It's very awkward." Oh, uh, Maya. Yeah. Not Mia. Maya. Maya. I don't care for a Maya. Maya I think you got to go to the stage. If you're at the stage, they won't bother you as much because they know oh. you're giving money to the to their buddies. I was hanging back. The hangback's no good. When you hang back, they think you want to chat and hang out. I don't want to chat. Hang back equals hang out. Uh, Up front equals me. don't front. Uh, I see. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, all right. Good to know. Because I, I thought I was trying to be a fly on the uh, on the tits, but uh, no dice. <laughs> There's no flies on the tits. <laughs> Apparently That's not. That's the problem. You, I mean, no fly zone. <laughs> Some titty bars you can go, they got flies on the uh, tits. We went to one in Tampa, I believe. <laughs> Serpents. Yeah, that was wild. <laughs> that was a couple of flies on the tits. It was like a send five cents a day for a cup of coffee tit. <laughs> They're all dancing to in the arms yes, of exactly, the angels. Exactly, yeah. They all had distended bellies and malnutrition. <laughs> Far away. <laughs> uh, Good time. So we got out of there, and uh, right when he got out of that lap dance, I was like, all right, we got to go, because we're just hemorrhaging money here. Uh, and, you know, I got a rider with all these booze bottles in it, and then I feel like I, I take a sip of booze out of the rider, and then I go to a place and spend $900 on booze. Right. So I feel like an idiot, but... What well, you mean? should put in your rider is a stripper in the back, in the ah, green room. Ah, you're thinking. That's good. Well, hopefully no fly on it, but... Uh, he zipped up his fly. We got the hell out of there and drove to Portland. No, Mar drove to Seattle. Marty McFly. So back to Seattle. So you went Seattle, Portland, Seattle. Horrible routing. Thank you, UTA. But yeah, Seattle flew in, drive to Portland, drive back to Seattle, do the Neptune. No list. Then uh, drove, uh, flew to Vancouver. Oh, cool. Now let me ask you real quick. How is that Portland crowd? Because typically they have extremely hot crowds. Killer. Uh, Killer. Always. I always say they know they're crunchy and annoying, so they overcompensate. And I'm talking, they want the blood, baby. They, they're, they're thirsty for it. They want to fist up the pooper and an N-word, and we delivered. All right, so then you're off to Coove, Coove. one of the great American cities. Uh, not American, but well, hell whatever. of a town. But now now this is where it gets hairy there, oh, Fatty. And, and this is where I need your, your, your thoughts, your input, your chime. My expertise. So, oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. My fair lady. Good balance. So, new balance. Spot built. Lotto. All right. So, I, uh, uh, you know, we do the shows, but we go back to the Neptune, great little theater, old movie house. They used to play Deep Throat. Oh, no Fun kidding. Fact, I love yeah. that little theater. I love Deep Throating. So, we finish in Seattle. We have a great night. Ari flies back to LA, the opener. Then I am getting my rental car, driving it to the airport, dropping it off, and flying to Vancouver. I wanted to drive to Vancouver, but the rental car wasn't available for that mm. many days. Whatever. So I always buy the gas at the rental place so I can return it empty. Big mistake. You think so? Yeah. How do you fig? Well, the only way that works out for you is if you push it in on empty. Otherwise, what? you're paying for some amount of gas that you're not using. True. Well, I pushed it in. Okay. Well, if you pushed it in, then it worked out. I, I'm a big creeper. I'm like pushing it with my back all the way up the hill to the rental car place. I mean, for the most part, though, people bring it back. That's how they get you. You pay for an entire tank of gas. Nobody's bringing unless you have it towed there. Right. Whatever, quarter of a tank, eighth of a tank. Some people bring it back with half a tank. No, I wouldn't do that. And then uh, you've paid for all that gas for somebody. Sure, sure. Well, I drove to... Portland and back to Seattle and now to the airport. So I really put some miles on this honky. That's not bad, and you don't have to go to the gas station in the morning. That's the plan. Now, this is one of these new cars with the push button. Boop, boop. Sure. With the lot, what is it, a fob? Key fob. Key fob. Fabio. Yes, exactly. So we got the key fob, whatever. I parked the car overnight. We do the shows. I, I wake up. Eh, let me go get the car. It's on E. I'll squeak it right into the Avis. Get in the car. I'm like, oh, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Because I'm a, I'm an old uh, Beamer guy. Yeah, I like a, a combustion engine. Uh, you know you know me. I love a good combust. And nothing. I'm hitting the button. Uh -huh. Just going. 
weird noises. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? So I'm like, let, let me apply the brake. Let me try again. Nothing. I'm out of gas. <laughs> I ran out of fucking gas. Oh, my God. I, well, you made the right choice with the gas, I guess. Apparently, I left the car running overnight. Oh. Because of the button, Jerry. I've the done button. It. I've done it. You we, done it. We did it together in Royersford. Oh, maybe it wasn't you, but it was somebody when we did the whole show and I came back and the car was running. Yes. And I'm like, what the hell? That's what I did. These cars, they're so quiet now. Back in our day, I drove an 87 Buick Century for the first 10 years of my life. I had an where, Oldsmobile. And it was the same thing. It was, it was like Kramer's car. Like, bloosh. Yes, and the thing, yes. I mean, this thing idled. You yeah. could hear it in, in Rhode Island. Maybe you had to pump the no gas. Offense. And rrr, 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 would catch, yes. you know? That was a lot of that shit back then. So you knew when that thing was on, and you knew when that thing was off. Absolutely. So you must have left the fob in the car. I did not. It kept running. It kept running without the Fabio. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. So very strange. And it's, you know, you got crust in your eye. You got jizz in your ass. You're like, ah, you just want to get to the airport. You don't want to have to figure shit out. I felt like a Cub Scout. Like, all right, here's my mission. I got to find two sticks and rub them together and all this shit. So now I'm like, all right, I have no gas in the car. I got to get to the airport. I got to make my flight. What the fuck do I do? So I... GPS, nearest gas station, half a mile. And I'm like, maybe I'll call AAA, but I don't have the time. The clock's ticking. Mm. They're going to take an hour and a half to get there. So I'm like, think, Jerry, think. So I run to the gas station, buy a two liter of Coke, walk outside with it. Ooh, I'm really thirsty. Pour it out in the grass. <laughs> well, this is against the law. <laughs> it's very against the law. I see a hobo going, oh, what's this guy doing? I thought I was the weird one here. I'm just sitting there going, <laughs> Glug, 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 glug. You know, Coke's all over the place. But isn't gas going to mix with the Coke now? Well, I'm just trying to get to the airport. Okay. Right? I'm I mean... not trying to fix a car or help a car or whatever. I'm just trying to get by. All right. So, you know, glug, glug, glug. Maybe I take a hit off of it every now and then. Glug, glug. And then I, you know, put the credit card in at the old Shell station. <laughs> I mean, isn't the hose bigger than the bottle? No, it, it fit right in. It was a it was a wide mouth, baby. No kidding. Yeah, I got uh, the, big the wide gaper. Mouth? Yeah, and that nozzle fit right in there. And they try to they try to rook you because the nozzle won't go if it knows it's not in the car. The mm. technology is so good. So there's a foreskin on the the nozzle, so you have to pull that back with your hand. Because oh. other when you shove it into a car, it pulls it back on its right. own. It's that little you know lip on there. A gadget. So, yeah, so I got just the, the metal in, the, the nose in there. Can and I just say, I'm not the sure they're dick. trying to screw you. I'm trying to think they might be trying to make sure no one's spraying people in the face with gas. Probably even better, yeah, because you can't do that. That's a myth. Right. Maybe Point in break. the 80s. Yeah. Zoolander. So I have to figure that out. So I, I'm really doing some some thinking here. So I finally get the, the foreskin back, I'm sh and that shit shoots. So like The bottle went flying at first, <laughs> you know, because it's like... <laughs> It's like when you put a, a, a sweet tart or a cert in there. What is that thing that makes this Coke blow up? Uh, you know. Okay. So, How much money would you pay for the gas station security oh, camera footage of oh, you doing God. this? Well, here's the clinker. You know how they pump the gas into the floor and the cement, and there's a guy with a big truck and a hose, and they're filling up the tanks? Sure. That guy's just sitting there on a bucket watching me. And he's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? He's eating a sandwich, filling up. Big fat guy. So... I'm doing that, and then I fill up the, the two liter. I'm covered in gas. I smell like shit. I'm, I'm hungover, and I run back a half a mile, and I just pop that cap open and just start glugging that <laughs> two liter bottle right in there. It's just full of Shanta and Sprite and Coca-Cola, Dr. P, and get back in the car. Boop. Starts right up. I got wow. about I got about this much gas, just a cunt hair and needle moved, and I drive that Nazi to the airport, drop it off, high five the guy, he goes, You smell like shit. I go, blow me, and I got on the plane and I went to Canada. Wow. Some heroin addict probably found that Coke bottle and oh. was like, Oh, sweet, and drank yeah. up a couple of fucking <laughs> liters of unleaded and probably. is dead somewhere, which is helps us. Yeah. As yeah. A society. I, you ever siphoned? Never siphon. No siphon siphon sounds. sounds, but yeah. uh, no, no siphoning. I've done that. That ain't pretty because you get a you get a mouthful. Yeah, I don't think that's good for you. No. Did you no. fly like covered in gasoline? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, Canada. Trudeau's not the only one with brown shit on him. God. 
So, yeah, flew to Canada, jumped in the shower, and then did a show at the Vogue Theater and had a great time. Wow. Vancouver rules, too. Another great Killer. audience. Great great gays there. Great fans. Yes, yeah. They got the heroin out there, but uh, it is a jewel. Isn't it fascinating how similar all of the Pacific Northwest is? Very sim. I guess New York, Boston, and Philly are pretty oh, similar yeah, in ways. Oh, so. yeah, it's regional, baby. Yeah, but they all have the similar, like, junky corner, homeless people, crazy, yeah. but great crowds. Also very nature very Patagonia, mm-hmm. very uh, crunchy. All that shit is similar, too. They're, they tend to be nicer out there. Yeah, I think so. I love the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. So... I long for it. Finally... Six-hour flight from Vancouver. Air Canada sucks. I'm sorry, oh. Trudeau and uh, Gretzky or whoever the fuck. Is he from Canada? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mounties, whatever you got. Air Canada stinks. Yeah. And, uh, again, no TV, whatever. Did the crossword. No Wi-Fi. Had to suck it up. So no I'm like, Wi-Fi? No Wi-Fi. Like, not available. Not like eight ninety nine. dollars Not available. Oh, Crazy. So fly back. There's non-Deltas. I don't even know what we're doing. You got to stick with Delta. United, Air Canada, they're all shit. Posers. Yeah, so I land in... Ooh. Teeny, weensy. You, you got to turn it up real loud. You'll hear it. Yeah. It was like was... a gay mouse queefed. But let me just say this, and I'll hand it over, because I've been hogging it. No hug. Hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Raycon. Have you started shopping for the holidays yet? Well, you better get on it, Patty. Right now you can shop early, skip the stress, and snag some of the best deals of the season that everyone will love. The premium audio products from Raycon. Everyone needs a pair of Raycons in their ears, whether it's for listening to music, taking work calls, or blasting a workout playlist. Their wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers Offer premium sound, comfortable fit, and up to 54 hours of battery life, all at half the price of the other premium audio brands. Plus, Raycon makes it easy to shop for every Tom, Dick, and Queefy in your life with holiday gift guides. Try shopping Raycon's holiday bundles. Their best buds bundle get you 30% off two pairs of earbuds. Wow. The Raycon website even offers buy now, pay later options. So right now, go to B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash Tuesdays and use code early BF, early BF, one word, to get 20% off site Y. That's 20% off Raycon product, which almost never happens, or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive Holiday bundles. That's code early BF at buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays for 20% off. Not too shabby. Buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. Enjoy those holidays, folks. The I land I finally land in New York. You're like, all right, I made it. I'm in Newark. You get in an Uber, I go, how's the traffic? No traffic. Very good. Very good. Yes. Here we go. And I land on Monday. So you never know with traffic. We get into the city. We're in the village or Tribeca area, and he's like, can't go, can't go. I'm like, what are you even talking about? He's like, parade. I look up, there's a fucking Halloween parade going down the street. Oh, it's right Halloween. on 6th Avenue. I live on 6th Avenue, so I have to talk to the police. And I'm like, hey, can you let me over? I got the suitcase. I smell like gas. They I look like a Unabomber. Still with the gas. Well, you know, same day. And uh, they walk me to the apartment. I get in. See the lady. She's like, what are we doing tonight? It's the Halloween parade. I go, ah, I just want to sit down and wash this fucking unleaded off me. And uh, we ended up taking shrooms and hitting the parade. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, good times. Halloween in New York. Hard pass, folks. I was going to say, nothing better. <laughs> no, they got, the, what are you, crazy? They got the masks on and the people, everyone's oh, yeah. crazy. I mean, it, it's terrifying. I did the parade one year when I was in my 20s, and I was like, this sucks. It's a young man's anal, for yeah, sure. I did it a few times. Soda and I went out one year, and you just, you forget that you have your costume on. Yeah. You're like a dipshit, and it's just like everyone's in fucking crazy mask. You don't know who's crazy and who's not. I know. You got that right. Well, there was a couple shootings, a stampede. I don't know if you heard about that. No, I don't know about the stampede. Oh, yeah. Tramp stampede. And uh, it was uh, was a fun night. Ended up getting getting real toasty and had a couple of beers. Well, there's shrooms. You're you're like the king. But Salacuse texts me and he goes, me and Simonson and Ronnie Chang are at a diner. And I go, I'll be there. 
What a weird group. I a kooky group, but I sat down with them, and this lady in a full clown suit, white face, big hair, but you know, the big boop, 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 polka dot, and she goes, you're going to use that ketchup? And I went, ah, and I ran out of there because <laughs> the shrooms. What color was the ketchup? That's what I want to know. Ah, uh-huh. it was... It was uh, light red. Boy, Simonson, Chang, and Salacuse. I mean, yeah. these must have been good mushrooms if you ran to that hang. Well, I was uh, <laughs> I was doing the heavy lifting, as they say. But uh, once that clown came out, I was I was beelining it to the to the house. That's my worst nightmare. Oh God, I'm, I'm Booger Central. Here. I know. I've been watching you pick. <laughs> no pick. Couple couple scratches. That's a picking. I saw a thumbnail get inside. All right, what do you got? I'm, I'm hogging. Let me shoot. Oh, man, these spot builds just pop back up, and they're really quite get, quite handsome. You're going to get some targeted heads with that one there, Fed. You're going to be coaching Little League before you know it. <laughs> I, I miss these things. Oh, look at the blacks. Look at these <laughs> ones. Okay. Look well, at those. Cut that clip. Those are the ones I'm talking about with the booty Lucy. shorts. Next year, I'm going as a football coach. I like it. Yeah, I'm going to uh, get some spot builds and some baby shorts. All right. Don't go as Paterno. Um, we were just talking about Zelinsky. Was he that guy's name? Zelins? No. No. Sandusky. Sandusky. Jerry Sandusky. I know it was a Dusky or an Insky or a uh, Polak. We had a long talk about him when I was out in Seattle. But uh, oh, yeah? if I said it on here, they'd shoot me. I'd love to hear it. Well, I just think Sandusky's misunderstood. That's all. <laughs> um, ah, that's a hot take right there. Um, by the way, know, he's probably a hell of a coach. I got a tease. I got a big. My my agent told me to tease Chicago. Big Chicago Ooh, news coming. I got love Chicago. Big Chicago. Big Boston. I got a bunch of crazy dates in the books that I don't. I think I I think these clubs are going to take a well a lot of hit. gays in Chi Town they yeah. they come out in the in the Chi yeah so uh, you know big news coming Ooh, um, gay new special what are we talking uh, well I got a big Divorce? date there okay well I got a lot here I don't know what to get to oh I didn't know you had a lot sorry well we both got a lot we're living the high life but nothing crazy we're gonna do a bonus too so uh, whatever you right, got all right oh yeah we're 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 Taken off on Patreon. Yeah, by the way. we'll save that Sandusky hot take yeah. for the bonus. <laughs> really blowing up on the uh, Patreon, but yes, I got all these LA stories. But I want to talk about the oh. microwave thing. Let me just give you the microwave thing real quick because the microwave is interesting. And give me the improv too when you're done. Yeah, I'll go to the improv after all this. Right, but all right. we got uh, we we have a shared area. What do you call that? A break net room to break room. A yeah. break yeah. room, snack room, whatever. We're in this stupid fucking office. We have to get out of. Yes, yes, get out. We so gotta I, talk to him today. So I had a cinnamon roll. You can see the remnants here. Can I have that nugget there? Yeah, have that little to... piece of shit there. There's, nothing, there's this. no jizz on there. Uh, if there's, there's no little... jizz, I don't eat it. Yeah, a little bit of jizz. Whatever I eat has to have Jeez, come on You're a real it. raccoon, man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So watch Easy your language. Mm. So I got a cinnamon roll, and I'm standing. Call in, email, comment for the algorithm. Boy, that is tasty. I'm standing in front of the microwave. I have the microwave area. You have the window. I'm undressing a cinnamon roll. The plastic, very daintily. Ooh. I just naturally do it daintily. Mm-hmm. And a guy comes in the break room, whatever, and he goes, how you doing? And I said, I'm fine. And I'm still daintily uncovering. He takes a dish, fish, vegetables, Aww. chicken, a whole thing, reaches across my face, opens the microwave, puts it in. So right away, I'm like, okay, he's cutting me. Yeah. A little annoying, but whatever. It'll probably be a 30-second heat pops it in three minutes 55 seconds that's an eternity he cuts me and puts in a four minute item what's and he, leaves what's he broiling a ham what, what goes in for four minutes i don't know but i'm like i got a 20 second cinnamon roll here uh, step yeah. on it i've cooked a thanksgiving turkey in less time than that i mean this is an outrage am i am i wrong am no, I right? no 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 i here's my thoughts you're you're undaint you're daintily undressing you're taking the panties off the labia whatever he didn't think you were heating it. He must not have thought I was heating, but still, at four minutes. Four minutes. Well, what, what could he have had? Uh, you know, a mutton? And it was vegetable. It had that broccoli, uh, nasty smell. And by the way, who doesn't heat a cinnamon roll? It's a big, fat cinnamon roll covered in jizz. Of course I'm heating. I wouldn't heat it, but I, I now that you say that, I'll start heating every roll. Oh, you heat it's goo. You saw. You came in. You saw. Oh, it was. I was jealous. It was a big goo gobbler. I wanted to lick your lips. <laughs> So uh, let me get to L.A. Uh, last couple weeks ago, I went to L.A. I went to Gig Harbor and then went to L.A. This week, I flipped it this time. Okay. Go to L.A. Back up. Do the business. I see. And then you shoot up. 
That's the way to do it. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. So I'm going one? to Gig Harbor for vacay with the family okay. out there. So my thought is, like, I'm already all the way out west. This is what I'm going to start doing more of. I go there six times a year mm. to see these kids. So I'm like, I'm already 3,000 miles west. I might as well pop down and do some L.A. business. You got that right. That way I can balance career with seeing these children that I care about. Yes, children. So this time I go L.A. first, then Gig Harbor, which is better. I agree. Because you get all the Hollywood stuff in. And I got to tell you, it took me about 22 years, but I really feel like I have some um, connection in L.A., some belonging. Yes, you got some juice. The improv is really taking care of me. I got to give a shout out to the Hollywood improv. Love him and Aaron Rita. over there. Yeah, so nice. Killer. Great club. So nice. Fuck Great the club. They gave me a bunch of spots, uh, which was fun, Wednesday, Thursday. And uh, you fly out there, and it's tough because you got to balance it. You know, believe it or not, we're, we're very popular guys. Mm. I got Chris Walsh. I got Tommy John again. Oh, I got my friend Lindsay popular. Adams. I got, uh, yeah, yeah, we're not popular with the audience. Sure. But, um, and then you got uh, Bobby Kelly is there. Oh. He's promoting his special. Ari Shafir is there promoting his special. Wow. And so Bobby says, stay at the Hotel Ziggy. That's where I'm at. Ziggy. That's right across the street from the store, right on Sunset Strip. Wow. That's like a rock and roll, cool people hotel. So I say, you got it. I'll Never stay there. It. Okay, Ziggy for the piggy. I don't even realize till I get there, Ari Shafir is in town. He's staying at the hotel next to the store, what? across the street. So it's me, Bobby, Ari, all on Sunset Strip. Wow. How about that? How about that? Love it. So we go out and, uh, we're, you know, we're, we're mess- you're trying to see your L.A. friends, but then your best New York buds are there. So I'm yeah. like, let's all get together. I go over. And don't you love when someone's in your hotel? Bobby's like, I'm in 209. So I was like, I'll be what? right down. So I go down there. I go in his room. It's a mess. We start talking, bullshitting. Your neighbors. Yeah, we meet up with our. We go to the V Cut, the cigar joint. I love the V. Shout out to Kyle, who's a Tuesday. He works there. He opens it late after hours. Oh, you got the late open. So we got me, Jonagan, Ari, and Bobby. We did two comics, two cigars, our new podcast. You can check it out. Oh, nice. Great hang. Just the four of us smoking cigars and Kyle. Shout out. Then Dave Rath walks by because it's right what? next to the improv. He goes, What the hell? Look at that. And he's like, Ari, John, uh, uh, Bobby, Joe. And then he comes in, he sits, doesn't recognize John again. Ooh. And he, a couple times he goes, Hey, Mark. Oh. Mark. And then I order, I'm a piece of shit. I'm garbage. I'm like white trash garbage. I'm starving. So I order McDonald's Uber Eats, which is so embarrassing because to the V cut, to the V cut. Oh boy! So I come. I'm wearing. I'm wearing this. I come out and uh, I go up to this guy's in a Mustang. He gives me a paper bag, like a shopping bag, sure. with McDonald's. And then everyone at the Improv is hanging out. They're literally right next to each other. Yeah. So I see like. J.F. Harris, a few other comics, some Tuesdays. Everyone's like, hey, Liz. And I'm like, hey. And I just reach in this car and pull out McDonald's. And I'm like, well, the the curtain's down. Yeah, this is the real me. I'm a piece of shit. And then I'm like, I'll be right over. I'm just hanging out in here. Right, But I guess while I was in there, Rath was like, Mark, I love what you and Joe are doing. (laughs) And John again is just... Devastated, just oh, looking, I don't going, blame Are you him. kidding? He's so not me. He's like a handsome guy. He's put together, not a hair on a blade. He's got the glasses on. He's always going to button up. He's I, so not me. I love that you're pretending you're not handsome or put together. I mean, he. he <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is an outfit you're wearing. You look, you look very handsome. Really, you're very attractive. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, you've done pretty well. With but he's the got like a flat top. He's got the glasses. He's got a, a button down on. I feel like he's tucked in. He seems. More uh, mature. Yeah, yeah, he's better looking for sure. There but, you go. You know, he, yeah, you know, you're both cool guys, about the same height. We're yeah. hanging out together. I got an inch on him. I don't know. You know, I can see it. All right, uh, yeah, but, with brunette, uh, white, thin white men, comedians. Yeah, we were laughing too afterwards because you're like, he could just say anything, and then Dave Rath is like. Mark Norman just saying the N word at a hang. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, that's terrifying. But I felt bad. It was dark, and I think it was just a moment. By the way, Rath, great guy. Great guy. Great guy. One of the nicest guys. He's Good so egg. cool from Massachusetts, right? I didn't realize. Loves comedy. And what is he, 6'9? Yeah, he's a big guy, and he came in, and so he smoked with us. And it was one of those ones where you're like, you're nervous that someone's going to walk by who sucks. Yeah. And be like, oh, right. look at this. But he came in, he added, and we chatted, and uh, that was, it was just a great hang. And you just feel cool. It's after hours. 
You're sitting around a circle, smoking cigars. Do this spot at the Improv. It was fun. And then my friend Dave Yates was there, who I love. Lindsay Adams, who I love. Tim Dillon was there, hey, who I love. Look at this. Love Dillon. This is at the Improv. This is all at the Improv. Uh-huh. And uh, it was a light crowd, like 35 people. But it was fun to fuck around. Yep. And everyone was so nice. Then the next night, I'm on both shows there. And the lineup, some of you might have saw, I posted. It was Sebastian Maniscalco. Woo-wee! Then David Spade. Woo! And then me. That's lunch. Wait, you're closing? I'm closing it out, baby. What is that? Big time jizz. You got that right. Yeah. So you just feel cool. And I went and did Chad and JT podcast. I love you know, those guys. Those guys are great. They're they're fans of ours, it wow. seems like. And uh, great pod. Keep an eye out for that. I did Jonigan's pod, which is great. The local news with Alex Stone, who's hilarious. Check uh. that out. And then we did two comics, two cigars. So I was podcasting all day. I got to tell you about this real quick. I, so then the second day, Wednesday, I got to meet up with, first, Ari's across the street. Sure, hold on. Nice. All right, Ari. Count it. So Bobby's now left. Ari's across the street. I go, let's get breakfast. So he goes, we go to the, I go, let's go to Norm's. And he goes, no, let's go to the Griddle. He goes, you're visiting, so whatever you want. And I go, well, I've never been to the Griddle. It's a classic place on Sunset, mm. so you got to walk east for like a mile. Beautiful day. We get there. The music is just pump. I hate like, the pump music. 10 a.m. You, like, so loud you can't even believe it. Brutal. And he's like, I know this is, like, too Jewish. It's embarrassing, but I got to leave. I know. I'm with it. That ain't Jewish. <laughs> it's like, let's Jews get out of like here. Maybe he saw an oven and wanted to leave. So we leave. We go to Starbucks. We get a tea. We got an Uber. This is always great because, you know me, I like to make the decisions. I'm sure. a bit particular. Sure, sure. And so uh, I'm like, let's go to Norm's. He's like, let's do griddle. And I'm trying to improve myself. So I'm like, griddle it is. All we'll right. go with your idea, which you know makes me just burn inside. <laughs> griddle be this. I appreciate it. Good for you. And then we get there. It's too loud. And I'm like, there, I'm like, oh, should we leave? I guess we'll leave. And I'm like this. Yes. Norm's is better. Norm's is better. It's classic. Carl Reiner, Jerry yes. Seinfeld. It's got the, the thing, yes. whatever kind of architecture yes. and the thing. The it's 60s. It's orange. It's beautiful. So Norm. We take an Uber, so I get the best of both worlds. I get my way while also being like, let's do what you want to do. Good for you. Also, clearly, I was I was right. He well, picked the shitty place. What is Griddle? Is that just a different diner? It's just a dinery thing. Uh-huh. And... Uh, Sometimes these diners get too hip. I don't want hip. I want fucking hash browns and coffee. Exactly. So we go to Norm's. It's perfect. Then we just walk around West Hollywood for a while, having one of those great talks, 70 degrees, sunny. And you know that feeling when you go to a party, you go to a town, you go to a place, you're like, should I be over there? Where am I? Why aren't I the cool people? What's Where am I supposed to be? You're cool. You got spade open for you. This felt like I'm right where I want to be. Great hang. He goes. He's got to go work on his special. Juice. Right then, Chris Walsh goes, hey, let's go meet up. So then my other buddy, Chris, comes, and we go walk around. We have lunch. We stroll around Larchmont Village. Oh, that's so very sexy. Beautiful. Oh, my God. It's gorgeous. But good for you to get an L.A. guy in there, because it's funny to go to L.A. and then hang out with the New Yorkers. I know. Exactly. So we hang out for a couple hours. He drops me off at the podcast. I do Chad and JT's podcast. Keep an ear out for that. Great pod. We And we went deep. We got oh, really? We talked some good oh, stuff. I'll listen to that. It was a great pod. And uh, then I leave. So now I've had 10 hours of hanging out. Great yeah. hanging, but 10 hours. And I got about two hours to kill. So I walk across the street to the Grove. You know, the Grove over there? Oh, the yeah. Love the Grove. Got to eat dinner. And I, I like this feeling. I go, I'm going to Cheesecake Factory. Wow. Sometimes you're in a town. Everyone goes, you got to have the taco. Yeah, you got to have yeah. Billy's tacos. You got to have Donnie's hot dogs. Sure. And I go, I got two hours. This is a day of socializing, all day socializing. I got two hours alone. I'm going to get my four cheese pasta at Ooh-wee. Cheesecake, and I'm not going to listen to one person go, in L.A., you go to Cheesecake? Well, we'll blah, blah, yeah, blah, you got to get blah. a lot of that. So I sit there, eat my big bowl of pasta, go over to the improv, and uh, Johnny comes over, Henry Phillips comes over, wow. Chris Walsh comes over. And uh, I sit up in the little, there's a little staircase there. You can watch the show. Yes, yes. 
I watched Maniscalco. Beautiful woman sits next to me. I think it might have been Spade's dame. Oh, he's, he's always good. He's a coxman. He does very well. Yeah, he's a cute little blonde twink. So I'm sitting up there. I've never seen Sebastian live. Oh, he's a treat. This guy's. Uh, I'm dying. Yeah. I'm up there howling. He gets a standing O to start and to finish. Wow. On a 15 minute set of the improv, 20 minute set. Wow. I saw him at the garden, and it was it was pretty magical. He was he was great, and then Spade comes out, and you know, you're, there's a little boy inside. Of you that's like I was in middle school watching this son of an onion, Tommy boy. Um, and he's standing over me. I'm like, Do you want to sit? And he's like, No, no, no. And I'm like, He's like, Great to see you, which I would never met. Nice I guy, he knows who I am. I bet he knows. Very nice guy. And so, uh, Sebastian goes up, he kills, Spade goes up, he kills, I go up, I kill. Hell yeah, and you just feel great. And there's some Tuesdays there over here, and they're like, Gay, whatever. It's all pipes, you get a little pop on the walk up. Yeah, well, I don't know about pop, but ah. um, mom and pop. But, uh, pop your cherry. No big story. I got some other things we'll share next week, but it was very fun. You come off, and it's it's me, Henry, Tommy, Chris, just in the circle. Love it. And then you, the people are coming by going, hey, Tuesday. I mean, probably 10 people afterwards came. You're like, I, I drew fans here, which wow. is exciting. And uh, one guy gave me a big old script. He wants us to star in a movie ah. that he wrote. It's, it's Thicker than my cock. Uh, really? We might have to burn that. I haven't uh, started reading it yet, but I'll, I'll give it a read. By the All way, right. you get funding. I'll be in a, a porn. I don't give a shit. Hey, now we're talking. So, Stranger uh, by the Lake too. Yeah, exactly. But uh, just a great... Great trip. Great to see all those guys. And you just leave feeling like, I love these guys. Great guys. And you see them uh, so rarely that it's special again. It feels special. And so I'm going to start coming to L.A. a lot more. Hey. and uh, trying to Trying to work some other pods out. I kept missing people. But uh, what a town. Here, here. I love it. I love going to other places and having your crew there, too. Great crew. Great yeah. crew. Great club. Shout out the improv. Yes. Good eggs. All right. Well, we're uh, we're over. Where are you going to oh be there, God. Fatty? You got some dates? What's I cooking? got well, Chicago. Big announcement coming soon. Uh, oh. I don't even know what day we're on anymore. Where the fuck are we in our lives? I don't either. We're at a wedding. We're, we're, we're like, on a honeymoon. We're like two weeks from now. Oh Jesus Christ! Well, everyone, uh, I'm sure you've already watched Ari special, but make sure you check that out. Check out the Phil Hanley special. Yes. Yeah. Who else has specials? Jesus Ron Christ. Ron has one. Ron on. Stavros, uh, yeah. Us. A lot of whites. Check out our uh, YouTube specials, of course. Uh, where am I going to be? December. I'm in uh, Woodstock, Vermont. December 4th. Wow. That's the Vermont Comedy Festival. Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, December 8th, 9th, and 10th. Omaha Funny Bone. December 16th and 17th. Then Cleveland, January 12th through the 14th. That's uh, hilarious. Please come out to that. They just built more seats in that place. And, wow. Uh, yeah, they're taking care of me. So make sure you get your seats, get your tickets early. Hilarities, January 12th to the 14th. Columbus Funny Bone, that's in March, March 3rd and 4th. So a little out in front. But uh, check out those dates. A bunch of dates at ComedianJoeList.com. And there's something else I'm supposed to plug. I thought I'd put it down here. Mm. Maybe not. Check out Chad and JT. Check out uh, the local news, Tommy Johnigan's podcast. I'm on both of those. Check out Two Comics, Two Cigars on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube. Here, here. All right, all right. I'm at uh, Cobbs in San Francisco. One more show at the Wilbur in Boston. Fillmore in Philly. Uh, Nashville, Zanies. Honolulu I'm going to. Whoa. Come on out to that. That's uh, selling horribly. Yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, Buffalo. Uh, Toronto again. New Haven. And uh, then we're going into some good old, good old fashioned fun at the Miami Improv. That'll be a rough one. <laughs> so uh, come on out, MarkNormanComedy.com. Uh, we might be drunk. Out to lunch. I hate myself. This year's material. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Howie Mandel, Bill Burr, you name it. Uh, a lot of fun stuff cooking. Get on the Patreon. It's hot. It's piping hot. It's better than ever. It's bubbling over. We're about to do another bonus right now. You're missing out. Best Patreon in the country. Praise Allah. No.